Okay, hello, hello. Good evening, guys. We are just, hello, good evening. Just hello, two minutes. Sir. Good evening. Good evening, Anita. Thank you for joining Elio and Marvin. Vamos a esperar entonces ahí que se nos unan. Todavía tenemos dos minutitos para comenzar. Así que thank you very much for being on time. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. Let me see here. Give me a second. Estoy viendo que han um, compartido sus, um, your, how can I say it? Son como comprobantes, ¿verdad? Si les hacen falta, pues igual hay que mandárselos lo más pronto posible ahí a los administradores para que lo tengan eh, en sus registros. ¿Sí? Y en WhatsApp, ¿verdad? Creo que ahí es, fíjese. Si no, creo que también al personal se los piden ellos. Uh -huh. uh, pero... Es de comprobar que uno ya bajó el manual educativo, ¿verdad? Sí, el manual está ahí desde el primer día, que es el que yo ocupo sí. para dar las clases, y ese sí puede va a descargarlo en cualquier momento. Ajá. Entonces, esa es la confirmación que ellos quieren, ¿verdad? Es, creo, la de, ajá, de que usted ya recibió el comprobante, creo que ese es. Uh -huh. sí, sí, bueno, Dígame. Mucho. Good evening. Sí, yo me he mandado el comprobante ajá. al chat donde mandaron el mensaje, lo tenía que descargar y llenarlo y firmarlo y todo eso. Ah, ok. Entonces yo lo mandé, este, creo que temprano lo mandé, pero no me han dicho nada de que ya lo recibieron o nada, ni han visto uh -huh. el mensaje. Ah, ok. Vaya, let's do something, let's wait, ¿verdad? Esperemos y sí, lo que sí, ¿verdad? Es que cuando nosotros este, ya vamos en, ya estamos, ¿cómo les puedo decir? Ellos revisan. ¿Verdad? Si ya está la, si ya está la, la lista completa, si no, pues eh, ellos le van a escribir directamente. Si por el momento, si no se preocupe, ¿verdad? Así que si ellos no le han contestado, muy probablemente están recibiendo ahorita, luego van a chequear y si hace falta alguno, pues le van a escribir directamente. Así que no worries. A veces sí se tardan un poquito en todo lo que reciben los documentos. Ok. Okay, very good. Well, guys, it's eight o'clock. Así que thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for joining. I know that some of you might feel a little bit tired, a little bit stressed, stressed out, right? Uh, probably was a very hard day, but here we are. And let's go ahead and take advantage of the time. Now, guys, today is... Um, January, well, it's Wednesday, right? Wednesday, January 25th, right? So in this case, uh, we have, um, we're going to begin or kind of, you know, uh, we're going to kind of continue in, right? Or given a continuation of the topics that we have been, you know, covering. But today we're going to be working with the section number three. Remember that so far, we have completed section one and two, and now we're transitioning to section three. Now, what we're going to do is that we are going to be checking directly from the manual and the platform, right? Some of the things that we're going to be covering. <laughs> Creo que alguien está escribiendo en la pizarra. Entonces, we're going to be covering some things, right? And in the platform, right? If you see the very first, um, the very first thing that we have, it's a video, right? So I won't go through the video, right? I will go directly to the lesson objective, right? And the, le the lesson objective is, in this class, participants will listen to a conversation about offering explanations, okay? Listen to that. Sometimes, right, something happens, you know, and and there are some situations or circumstances, you know, that are not in our control and we need to offer an explanation. So how do we do that in English? And being honest with you, I really like the book because it has very 
a variety of topics, a variety of, um, you know, daily life uh, situations, right? Entonces, por eso me gusta este libro y lo que están viendo, porque son situaciones que sí las van, la van a experimentar y que van a necesitar el vocabulario. So, let's go ahead and check them. And de ahí les dice, de ahí, ¿verdad? Pay attention to past models, right? So we're going to use, we're going to be using models, right, to do that. Now, okay, over here, it says what happened. Now in the conversation or throughout the video, right? Well, you you will find this conversation, right? So the conversation is this one, but in your manual, you will see it like this. Lo van a ver acá. Okay? Lo van a ver así. This is the conversation, right? So the conversation's title is What Happened, right? What Happened? Now, uh, it says listen and practice, right? Listen and practice. So we have a conversation between uh, Jackie and Bill, right? So let's go ahead and listen to this. Right. Uh, first, Jackie says, right, um, you asked Beth to be here around seven, didn't you? Yes. What time is it now? It's almost eight. I wonder what happened. Hmm. She might have forgotten the time. Why don't I call her? I mean, why don't I call and see if she's on her way? A few minutes later. Bill says, I got her voicemail, so she must not have turned down her cell phone. I hope she didn't have a problem on the road. Her car couldn't have broken down or something. Of course, she may have simply forgotten and done something else today. No, she couldn't have forgotten. I just talked to her about it yesterday. I guess we should start with, uh, without her, right? So guys, here we have a situation right? And um, there is a woman that should be there. She's not. They don't know what happened. <laughs> and that's a, the that's a reason why we have the title, What Happened, right? And we're going to check, you know, some of the situations throughout the grammar section. So can I have two volunteers to read the conversation out loud? Volunteers to read the conversation? Thank you so much. First, Rosa Maria and Eliu, and then Rafael and someone else. So, Rosa Maria, can, eh, can you help me? Eliu, ayúdeme con Bill. Ah, bueno, no, está bien así. Eh, Rosa Maria, ayúdeme con Jackie, and then Bill, ayúdeme con... Perdón, Eliu, ayúdeme con Bill. Ya le cambié el nombre a Eliu. Yep. Go ahead. You ask Beth to be here around 7 during you. Yes, what time is it now? It is almost eight. I wonder what happened. Hmm. She might have forgotten the, the time. Why don't I call and see if she's on her way? A few minutes later, I got her voicemail, so she must not have turned on her cell phone. I hope she didn't have a problem on the road. Her, her car could have broke down or something. Of course, she may have sim simply forgotten. I done something else today. No, she couldn't have forgot. I just talked to her about the yesterday. I guess we should start with two here. Okay, guys, thank you very much, okay? Thank you so much. Now let's go ahead and check the conversation and let's look for words, right? That um, we need to practice, right? So whenever um, we are reading, you know, verbs in past, do not forget the, ver the, the video, right? Ayer les compartí un video para que estudiaran más o menos cómo funciona la pronunciación de los verbos en pasado. And ya van a ver que les va a ayudar un montón. Okay. But now, no worries. Okay. We have what happened. What happened. 
right? She might have forgotten. She might have forgotten, right? Uh, broken down, broken down, right? Uh, and done something else, done something else, right? Y también con couldn't, should, ¿verdad? Acuérdense que couldn't, should, yo les comentaba, no sé si fue acá que lo estaba diciendo. Eh, we have could and should. Oops, sorry. Should. ¿Pero qué sucede con esto? Bueno, que prácticamente es un poquito... Um, es un poquito diferente en pronunciación. Quiero ver, no, no me deja cambiar el. Quiero ver, fuente. Es que se ve bien pequeñito. Así que está. Vamos a ver, con 14, 18, etc. Ahora sí. Entonces, es como que esa L no estuviera ahí. Y digamos, could and should. Uh -huh. Muy bien, could and should. Muy bien. Y pues tenía también a Rafael que quería participar en the, in the conversation. ¿Hay algún otro volunteer para que nos ayude con Rafael? Any other volunteer? No? Me. Ok, thank you so much. Entonces tenemos a Rafael and Jenny. Entonces comience Jenny y Rafael va a continuar. You asked Beth to be here at around seven, didn't you? Yes. What time is this? What time is this now? It's almost eight. I wonder what happened happening. Mm, she might have forgotten the time. Why don't tell I call and see if she on her way? A few minutes later. I got her voicemail, so she must she must not have turned on her cell phone. I hope she didn't have a problem on the road. Her car could have broken down or something. Of course, she 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 may have simply forgotten and done something else today. No, she couldn't have forgotten. I just talked to her about it yesterday. I guess we should start without her. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Now, another tip, okay? Another tip that I can share with you is linking, right? Thank you so much, eh, Rafael and Jenny. Thank you, thank you. Now, for example, here, Okay, we have a situation. Aquí digo, she's on her way, right? Entonces es como unir todo, right? Digo, she's on her way, right? She's on her way. She's on her way. Si ustedes se fijan, esta es consonante con una vocal y esta pues también es consonante con un sonido que es bien como... como um, ¿Verdad? Her, her, her. Es como solo aire. ¿Verdad? Entonces yo puedo unir todo eso. She's on her way. She's on her way. Entonces, we have to be, you know, uh, we have to imitate those type of things, you know, that we listen from um, native speakers. ¿Ok? I think, creo que escuché otro por acá. Eh, let me see. Aquí está. Turned on her. Turned on her. Right? Aquí, este sonido de, de D se une con el siguiente. Turned on. Turned on. Right. Ah, oh, um, I got her voicemail, so she must have turned on her cell phone. Right. Como este no es turned, sino que es turned. Turned on her cell phone. Right. So, great job, everyone. Very good. Now, let's go ahead and see. What is the structure or what was the focus right of this particular lesson. She might have forgotten the what time is it now? It's almost eight. I wonder what happened. What Give me a second. It it's almost, you asked Beth to be here around seven o'clock, didn't you? Yes, what time is it now? It's almost eight. I wonder what happened. Hmm, she might have forgotten the time. Why don't I call and see if she's on her way? I got her voicemail, 
so she must not have turned on her cell phone. I hope she didn't have a problem on the road. Her car could have broken down or something. Of course, she may have simply forgotten and done something else today. No, she couldn't have forgotten. I just talked to her about it yesterday. I guess we should start without her. Okay. What time was so in that case, right, could you hear what I was sharing? Eh, es como si usted uniese, ¿verdad? Sonidos de consonante con vocal sin necesidad de decir las palabras de forma separada, right? So my recommendation is to practice with uh, videos, listening to videos, so you can have a better understanding, okay? So here we have some questions. What time was Beth asked to come? What time was Beth asked to come? At what time? At seven. At seven. Very good. At seven. Correct. What time is it now? Eight. eight. Almost eight. eight. It's almost eight. Right. Excellent. And what does Will decide to do? What does he what does he say or what does he offer? Began the meeting without her. Mm, is that he what call Will? Her. He called her. Okay, okay, to call her and to check on her, right? Very good. What about a, what about the, the other one? Why can't Will contact Beth? Her cell phone is off. Exactly, the cell phone is off, right? And what do they decide to do? They decided to start without her. Exactly, they decided to start without her, that's right. Very good. Oh, sorry, Rodrigo. Eh, no sé si solo eh. Rodrigo experimentó que se escuchaba bien suavecito el volumen, right? Pero no se preocupe que se está aquí en la plataforma, así que puede ingresar, verdad, para escucharlo nuevamente. No, no hay problema. Now, those are the questions, right, that they ask over here throughout the conversation, right? Answering all of those to the rest of the conversation. To the rest of the conversation. What happened? Oh, here comes Beth now. Hey guys. So Beth is getting there. ¿verdad? Beth ya está llegando. Entonces, ahora vamos a ver qué explicación va a ofrecer. So she's going to offer an explanation, right? I had emergency. Oh, nothing serious. I Dog? What happened? Well, I was just about to leave when she started acting strange. Then she just passed out. Oh my gosh. I panicked. I thought she had died at first. I had to rush her to the emergency clinic. But is she okay? Oh, I hope she's all right. Yeah, she's going to be fine. The vet said it was some kind of virus. So he gave her an injection and I had to leave her with him. I'll go by later and pick her up. Oh, but guess what? What? She's going to have puppies. Congratulations. You're going to be a grandmother. <laughs> very funny, Bill. Yeah, Bill. Very funny. Okay, so now she has already offered the explanation, right? So what do you understand from what you could see? What was the explanation that she gave? Anyone? What happened? Why did, didn't she arrive on time to the meeting, uh, to the dinner? Mm -hmm. She had an emergency with uh, his uh, pet or mascota. Yes, exactly, right? Uh, let me see, hi, I need to answer a call. Okay, no problem, Jose Francisco. Thank you for letting me know, no se preocupe. Gracias por avisar. Okay, so yes, Eliu, that's right. Actually, she had an emergency with her pet, right? And what happened with her pet? Does anyone remember? What happened? Uh, yes, teacher, uh, I don't hear very well, but I remember in the platform uh -huh. the pet was pregnant. Yes, it's true. The pet is pregnant. It's a dog, right? And I think her name is Sally. So the dog is pregnant and it's going to have puppies, right? 
And that's the reason ella usa la, la expresión passed out. Passed out es como desmayarse o está, es como quedar inconsciente. Es este, ¿ve? Passed out, right? Y ella dice eh, that eh, Sally passed out. O sea, se desmayó o perdió la... ¿Cómo es? Quedó inconsciente, right? And yes, it's because it's going to have puppies, right? Oops, perdón, creo que se los mandé solo a Elizabeth. Todos, ahí está, ahí sí. I have a question, teacher. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Beth used she to refer to the pet. She. Correct. Mm -hmm. is, is that correct or is it or she? <laughs> you know what, Eliud, that's a very good question. And... It depends, and I will tell you on what. <laughs> Whenever you have a pet, and if you consider them part of your family, you can go ahead and use the pronoun he for a boy and she for a girl, right? But in, well, let's say for instance, you do not uh, consider probably the pet as one of your uh, members of the family, or it's not your pet, you can um, refer to them as it. For example, oh, um, I saw the neighbor's pet today. It um, barked at me, me ladró, ¿verdad? El perro me ladró. Entonces, it barked at me. So it, because number one, I do not consider it part of the family. And number two, because... I just see that pet as an animal, right? So it depends on how you feel, um, on how you feel, or if you don't feel comfortable with using he or she for a dog in this case. But it's possible. You can say it, she, or he. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so let's go ahead and see. This is uh, the information about the uh, about the conversation, right? But what happens in the manual, right? In the manual, we go to the grammar focus, right? In the grammar focus, remember, focus, right? Focus, 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 past models for degrees of certainty, right? Past models for degrees of certainty. Pero veamos cuál es la secuencia que lleva en la plataforma, porque ellos a veces lo toman de una forma diferente el manual. Así que veamos. This time we'll study past models for degrees of certainty. Stay and find out what this is about. Past models for degrees of certainty. It's almost certain. She must have left already. She must not have turned on her cell phone. It's not possible. She couldn't have been at home. It's possible. She may have forgotten the time. She might have forgotten the time. She may not have remembered the time. She might not have remembered the time. Her car could have broken down. Past models for certainty. You may use must or couldn't have. We use must or must not have when we are almost certain. We may also use couldn't have if it's not possible. Past models of possibility. We may use may, might, or could have. So remember, we may use may, might, and could when something is possible but we don't know for sure. When you want to use may, might, or could have, this is what you should follow. Subject plus may or might or could plus have plus past participle. She may have gotten lost. I will present two situations. We want you to come up with the best explanation. Number one, your best friend is in a terrible mood today. Number two, your brother or sister is short of money again. Okay, I won't go to the, I mean, over the situations, but I will definitely look at the past models for degrees of certainty. Um, when I use models, right, everything depends 
it's not heard it very well. Casi no se escucha, dice. Bueno, pero si no escuchan, voy a, voy a volver aquí a dar compartir sonido. Si no escuchan bien, no se preocupen que eso está en la plataforma. O sea, asumo que ya lo hicieron, ¿verdad? Si no lo han hecho, pues ahí está, no se preocupen. ¿verdad? You can watch it again. Y me voy a asegurar de nada más. Quiero ver. No, este no es, es este. Volumen, volumen. Voy a darle volumen por cualquier cosa, si lo seguimos ocupando. No, pero sí tengo todo el volumen, chicos. No sé qué sucedió. Lo siento. Algo está pasando por ahí. Ok, so I was saying. It's almost certain. Teacher, but what is certainty? Well, ¿qué tan seguro estoy de las cosas que suceden o que van a suceder o qué probabilidades hay de que una situación sea cierta? Right, that's what it is. Entonces tenemos it's almost certain. Right, certainty right, has to do with that. For example, she must have left already. Ella eh, muy seguramente ya se fue. Right, she must have left already. Or she must not have turned on her cell phone. Right, she must not have turned on her, her cell phone. Now, acá, ¿qué es lo que estoy diciendo? Que eso es seguramente lo que ha pasado. ¿De acuerdo? Eso es seguramente lo que, lo que ha sucedido que no le permitió llegar a esta persona. ¿Ok? It's not possible. Este, it's almost certain, es que yo estoy muy, y digámoslo así, completamente segura de que no es esa situación o que es esa situación. Por ejemplo, si yo digo, eh, hey, and where is Catherine? Ah, She must have left already. ¿Y por qué estás tan segura de que ya se fue? Ah, porque ella vive lejos y porque se va temprano y porque no tiene turno después en la tarde. Ah, entonces it's almost certain, right? Now what happens with it's not possible? Ahí sí es lo contrario. Eso no es posible. Por ejemplo, ah, eh, Catherine has already left, ¿verdad? Ya se fue. Entonces, usted dice no es posible. It couldn't have been, right? It, it, it couldn't be possible. ¿Por qué no? Porque ella tiene un turno extra en la tarde, entonces no se puede ir. Ah, ok. Entonces, en ese caso, it's not possible que ella se haya ido, right? Y tenemos it's possible. It's possible means that there is a very high probability that the person has already left. No estoy 100% segura, pero sí hay una probabilidad bien grande. ¿De acuerdo? Muy bien. Entonces, esos son los eh, uh, degrees of certainty that we have in the platform, right? No sé si hasta el momento hay alguna pregunta. Questions? Are you sure? Bye. Perfecto. Entonces, let's continue. ¿Alguien sabe qué quiere decir jumping to conclusions? Anyone? ¿Alguien que sepa? Saltando las conclusiones. Exactly. Por ejemplo, cuando nosotros, bueno, a veces sucede, ¿verdad? No sé si les ha pasado. De repente usted va en el camino y ve, pues, a un compañero de trabajo, lo saluda, y esta persona estaba bien seria, right? Y usted comienza a pensar, oh, well, probably um, he's angry at me, or probably he's very, like, uh, very stressed, right? And he didn't even notice me or probably this person, you know, is feeling sick, etc. Entonces, todas esas posibilidades que yo me imaginé, ¿verdad? Ay, que no me quiso hablar porque está enojado o yo hice algo malo. Entonces, all of those possibilities, right? Es eso, jump into conclusions or jump to conclusions. Jump into conclusions quiere decir, eh, ¿Cómo les puedo decir? Eh, llegar a una conclusión de una forma tan, 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 eh, ¿cómo les puedo decir? Que muy probablemente está basada en lo que nosotros pensamos y no en lo que en realidad ha sucedido, right Entonces, cuando alguien le dice a usted, y es bien, es bien común que en Estados Unidos le digan, hey, don't jump into conclusions. No saques tus conclusiones, ni siquiera sabes lo que le ha pasado a la persona. That's just, uh, this is a very interesting phrase.
¿Ok? Entonces, luego me paso a este, pero quizá voy a terminar la idea acá. Estas son las formas o los past models que yo voy a utilizar para poder expresar los diferentes grados de certeza que yo tengo. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Hay alguna pregunta, chicos? ¿Questions? ¿Questions? No question. Bye. Muy bien. Voy a pasar la lista, chicos, que no he pasado la lista. Ajá, sí, exacto, sacar conclusiones, cabal, Zulma. Ok, let's see. Alba, Dir Portal Díaz. Present, teacher. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present, teacher. Thank you. Oops, permito. Eh, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Present, teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Here. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urguía. Here. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eh, Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Dina Esmeralda. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jenny Lisset Campos Martínez. Present. Thank you, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present, teacher. Thank you so much. Luego, José Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you. José Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present, teacher. Thank you, José Jopito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present, teacher. Thank you so much. Eh, María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Uy, It's almost certain. She must. No sé qué pasó ahí. Entonces, María Azucena Ayala de Flores, sí, ¿verdad? Eh, yes. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you so much. Martha Ruth Enrique Reyes. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ivis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Presente. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María del Milaro Pérez de Paz. Here. Thank you. Eh, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present teacher. Thank you. Jensi Marlene León López. Present teacher. Thank you, and Zulma Beatriz Pérez Caldames. Present. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, so let's go back here to your manuals, okay? Let's go back here to the manuals, and let's go ahead and continue with the information that we have below. Okay. Entonces, tenemos acá el uso de los past models. We have uh, the three different options when it's almost certain, o sea que estoy super hiper mega seguro, it's not possible, estoy seguro de que no es así, and it's possible. Es que hay una probabilidad de que eso sea posible, right? Entonces dice, read each situation and choose the best explanation, then practice with a partner. So guys, I'm going to give you three minutes for you to complete the exercise on your notebooks, and then we're going to check it together, okay? Very good. <laughs>
Okay, are you ready? Yes. Yes. Very good. Let's go ahead and do it together. Lo vamos a hacer juntos. Okay, no worries. And I'm going to use this one. ¿verdad? Entonces, here we have the situation, right? And here we have the explanation that we offer, ¿ok? Entonces, si ustedes se fijan, estos past models que tenemos acá arriba son los mismos que nos van a ayudar a ofrecer una explicación, right? ¿Y cómo, teacher? Well, let's go ahead and check. For example, number one, Jane is in a terrible mood today. So, what do you think is the rest of the sentence saying. You could have a fight with her boyfriend. Okay. Okay. Dígame, Francisco. Jose Francisco. The same answer. Okay. Jane is in a terrible mood today. No se sean por allá. Because she could have had a fight with her boyfriend. Hmm. We will see if that is true. Number two, Brian got a cold and looked worried. So what do you think is the rest of the sentence saying? He couldn't have hear good news. Okay. Brian got a cold and looked worried, right? Okay. And por ahí dijeron. He couldn't have heard good news. Okay, that's true. Whenever you, um, give me one second. Give me a second. Okay. Brian got a call and looked worried. He couldn't have heard good news, right? So whenever you receive bad news, everything changes, right? Even your expression on your face changes. Um, you look worried, right? Uh, your eyebrows, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you, I think it's frown. Creo que frown es fruncir el signo, right? So uh, whenever that happens, all your expression or your facial expressions change, right? So that we can tell that. The teacher looks very happy today. He may have gotten a raise. He may have gotten a raise. A raise. <laughs> okay, uh, veamos. you think it's he may have gotten a raise? That's why the teacher is very happy today? Well, yeah. we, will, <laughs> yeah. we will see right now because we, we also are happy when we see our students. We are happy when we uh, can share with them, not only the money, right? And then Mora couldn't keep her eyes open she must not have gotten enough sleep. So she must not have gotten enough sleep, right? Jeff was fired from his job. What, what do you think it's the explanation? He might not have done his work on time. Oh, oh, okay, he might not have done his work on time. Oh. Then, my cousin is short of money again. She might have she spent might have too much, spent last, too much month. last month. <laughs> exactly, right? Could be, it could be. So, good job, guys. Now, si ustedes se fijan, acá en la parte, he may have gotten. Quizás consiguió, ¿verdad? Quizás habrá conseguido. She must not have gotten. O sea, lo contrario. He might not have done, right? His work on time. He might not, he might not have done. She could have had a flight with her boyfriend, right? She could have had. She must have spent, must have spent too much last month. And he couldn't heard good news, right? Entonces, esta es la estructura que ustedes van a ocupar. Un modal. Más un verbo y el verbo have en este caso y el pasado participio del verbo, right? Must not have gotten, might not have done, etc. ¿Ok? ¿Hay alguna pregunta hasta el momento, chicos? ¿Preguntas? No questions, ¿están seguros? 
Bye. Ok, very good. So déjeme borrar los dibujitos. Ahí está. Había una situación acá, creo que se llamaba pet peeves. Ustedes saben qué son los pet peeves. Creo que por aquí están, pero no me sé. ¿O será que estaba aquí abajo? Y me acercan. Porque había un pequeñito artículo. Aquí está, ¿no? Sí, aquí está, pet peeves. Guys, ¿ustedes saben qué es una pet peeve? ¿Saben ustedes qué es no. una pet peeve? No. <laughs> ok, muy bien. No worries, I'll help you. So, pet peeves are, you know, uh, kind of, well, the word or the, uh, the phrase is kind of weird, right? But something or a pet peeve, it's something that a particular person finds annoying. Como así, teacher. Cuando yo hablo de pet peeves, son todas las cositas que la gente hace que me disgustan o okay. que me desesperan, decimos en español, ¿verdad? Por eso las pet peeves son something that a particular person finds especially annoying. ¿Ok? Entonces, todos tenemos pet peeves. Son esas cosas que detestamos, ¿verdad? De, de, de a veces de ciertas situaciones, right? Or circumstances, etc. Entonces, can I have a volunteer to read the first part, please? Can I have a volunteer to read the first part? Sería acá, pet peeves es. Anyone? Me. Oh, José Francisco levantó la mano y luego creo que Sandra fue la que dijo mí o fue Jenny, perdón. Elizabeth. Ah, ninguna de las dos. Vaya, Elizabeth. Comencemos entonces con usted, Elizabeth, y luego seguimos con José. Comencemos, Elizabeth. Ok. Why is that some people? are always late, never return phone calls or answer email, don't listen careful when you talk to them, act differently in front of people they want to impress. Okay, very good. So why is it that some people, number one, are always late? <laughs> Never return phone calls, como lo estaba leyendo su compañera, etc. Okay, so why is that some people are like that? Sometimes we say, I don't know. For example, if you if you say, okay, we're going to meet at the cinema, right? And you are there at night, so you expect the other person to be around night, at least, right? So, but whenever you are waiting, right, that can become a pet peeve, meaning that it makes you feel angry or annoyed or frustrated, right? To be there waiting for someone. At least that's one of my pet peeves, right? And can you continue, please? I think it was Jose Peña. I uh, will continue. Come on, Mr. Friends and acquaintances. 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 Always look messy. Never remember to return things. Is this true? Are always short of money. Never know when to go home or get off the phone. <laughs> Good job, right? Always look messy, right? It's like, no, es que pena te tienes estos estilos, right? So why don't you wear them, right? Never remember to return things. Es que, can you leave, can I borrow your book? Um, ok, llévate el libro, pero tráemelo. Cuando termines de leerlo, avísame y nunca regresa las cosas. Entonces, esa es una pet peeve. Eso es algo que um, it annoys you, right? Entonces, um, are always short of money and never know when to go home or get off the phone, right? Entonces, una pet peeve es eso, chicos. Son las cosas que nos disgustan o que nos molestan que otros hagan, right? And as I was saying, we say, Pet peeves, right? Pet peeves. Can I have Eliu? Can you help me, please? Pero no sé si va a poder ver. Espérame. Déjeme ver. Quiero ver si va a poder ver la información. Creo que sí. Que me hace. Okay. Me hace? 
background and we're going to do it here. Can you read the questions? Okay. Which of the above pet peeves do you have about people you know? Mm -hmm. Which one is the word underline word? Underline mm -hmm. a pet peeve you could be accused of. When and why are you guilty of it? Mm -hmm. What other thing do you get peeve about? <laughs> okay, very good. It, it sounds kind of weird, the question, right? What other things do you get peeved about? So what are the things that annoys you? I mean, the things that annoyed you, I'm sorry, right? Entonces, which of the about pet peeves do you have about people you know? ¿Puede reconocer alguna de las que usted tiene, chicos? Anything over here? Any pet peeve that you have? Ninguna, any of them? Let me see, in my case, dígame, Elio. Creo que está on mute. In my case, I think that is never know when to go home <laughs> or get off the phone. Okay, very good. It says never know when to go home or get off the phone. Yeah, that's something that probably annoys um, some people, right? And uh, whenever you you say, uh huh, see, sí, uh huh, okay, mm hmm, yeah. And then you want to move, right? But you can't. No lo dejan, right? Okay, very good. Never know when to go home. Right, es que en su mente es que ya me quiero ir, right? And this person still continues talking, right? Dígame, Martha Ruth. Thank you, Elio. I never return phone calls or answer emails. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Never, never return phone calls or or tech or uh, a reply. Reply sería para los emails, right? And they never reply your emails. I don't know why that happens. Sí, manías, exacto, surma, algo así, ¿verdad? Pero uh, de esas que desesperan, como dicen, ¿verdad? Entonces el verbo reply es como contestar emails, ¿verdad? And that's true, Martha, okay? Um, people that do not call you back and that do not reply to your emails, right? Y llega al punto que hasta uno se le olvida, ¿verdad? Como uno está esperando que le, que le contesten and then we forget, right, about it. Muy bien. Okay, which is the worst? Which one is the worst? Dice, ¿cuál creen que ustedes que es la peor, la peor de todas? Es, no sé si está en la lista o ustedes pueden pensar en una. Solo uno, solo uno, no se pelee. In my case, I think that... algo es late. Ok, to be late. Creo que alguien estaba hablando. Claudia, ¿era usted? No, me, Elizabeth. Ah, ok, Jenny. Elizabeth dijo... Eh, In my ah, case, I think is cancel appointment at the last minute. <laughs> It's true, right? Yeah. Because you get ready, right? You prepare everything. And all of a sudden they say, oh, we're going to um, cancel, you know, the, the event or the situation. That's true. Thank you, Elizabeth. Eh, Jenny, dígame. Luego, Marta y, and then Eliu. And the people like? Cualquiera. Eh, eh, either or. Or did you no, say when I'm people lie? Uh, yes. Yeah, or when they invent, right, things. <laughs> And because sometimes they should be honest and say, I forgot it or I was doing something else. And that's the reason why I missed it, right? Probably sometimes we prefer people to be more honest, right? And not to invent things, right? Thank you so much. Eh, Marta, eh, de luego Eliu y luego Sandra. Yes, for me, uh, I have when, when the people act differently in front of people because they want to impress. Okay, that's a good one, right? And, and that's true because probably the person is not like that, but this person just wants to probably to call someone's attention and 
um, he or she just wants to be seen, right? And starts doing things that probably are not um, kind of part of their personality. Muy bien, I like that one, okay? Eliu, please, then Sandra and then Alba Dir. I think that one the word is always look messy. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes. Why? Because uh, there are <clears throat> there are some people that that always look like uh, like they don't wash their hands or uh -huh. or maybe the they use the cloth always with them. Um, Okay, it's the pen. It depends on the kind of work that the people have. But, but uh, when a people go to a meeting or a reunion, could be clean or nitty or with a good person, personal presentation. I mm. think so. Okay, very good. I think I understand the point, right? And I, with because of the pandemic. Uh, situation that we have, right? This thing about the virus, etc. It, I mean, everything changed uh, three years ago, right? And nowadays, people, it's like a little bit more lazy or lazier, right, than before, and do not take care of their personal appearance, right? And that's something that we need to be very careful with because. Um, not everybody thinks the same. No todos piensan que lo cómodo es, se ve bien, ¿verdad? Entonces, we need to know how and when, you know, we do things. Thank you, Eliu. Eh, Sandra, please. In my case, this act, different, act differently in front of people they want to impress. impress. Mm -hmm. And some people act different from the book. Mm -hmm. And from the partner is uh, is not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely, Sandrita. Thank you so much. That's true. People that um in English, I don't want to say fake, but that fake people es como gente pero alguien falso, digamos así. So we have to be very careful. Dice. This, bueno, déjeme ver aquí rapidito los correos y luego paso con Albadil, el correo en el chat, perdón. Dice uh, that people do not arrive at the appointed time. Muy bien, dice Zulma, and that's true. So the person is late. Uh, luego dice Claudia Marcela, I really hate when my neighbor turn on their music very loud. That's true, right? You know, sometimes I think this one is very difficult. Because when you want to listen to music, right, and you want to enjoy it, so in the end, everyone's, I mean, everyone listens to um, this music as well. Entonces, ay, depende, ¿verdad? Si yo no lo hago, entonces yo espero que no lo hagan, pero si yo lo hago, bueno, preparémonos porque también pueden hacerlo para, para que me moleste a mí, ¿verdad? Luego dice Rebeca, when people are texting during a meal. Sí, es cierto. Right, es creo yo más bien que es mala costumbre, okay? Eh, en esto, ma, costumbres son manners. People have bad manners. <laughs> it's a joke, dice. Yeah, people have bad manners, okay? And that can happen, right? Okay, uh, I hate, dice, aquí está la otra, okay. Rebeca dijo en la anterior, la que dije, Zulma dijo, but the people talk to you only when they need something. Yes, it's true, right? Sometimes it happens, okay? Sometimes it happens and people hate it. No nos damos ni cuenta y la verdad es que es algo que molesta, ¿verdad? I, ha I hate, dice Elizabeth, when the people don't drink coffee with me, <laughs> dice, okay, very good. They do not accept your invitation, okay? It's a joke, dice Elizabeth. Okay, so uh, Alba Dir, what, what is your pet peeve? Thank you. In my case, 
today. Now is um, while it, I prefer violence. Mm -hmm. Fíjense que se lo escuchó bien robótico, no sé si es la mala conexión, pero escuché ahí como que hubo interferencia. Tal vez si me lo puede escribir, Alvadir. Ok. Ajá, please, porque sí, ahí se escucha como, como robotic su voz y, y no alcancé a entender bien. Dice, okay. dice, ok, thank you, Alba. Por favor, me lo agrega aquí en el chat. Rafael ya puso otra. Ahí dice, I hate uh, when people make noises while eating, ¿ok? Así ve, I hate when people make noises while eating, mientras comen, right? So that would be, ok, very good. So pet peeves, those are the pet peeves, right? That we have, it, I'm going to er erase over here. Vamos a borrar todos mis dibujitos. Ah, yes. how, how do you say this uh, sentence? Which one? When people uh, drink uh, the soup with a spoon and make noise. <laughs> creo, que el verbo, eh, creo que el verbo es slurp. Ya vamos a ver. Quiero ver. <laughs> Ajá. Mm. Creo que sí, ese es. Déjeme ver. Ahorita está pensando. Ah, no, es bueno, sí, miren, por ejemplo, yo cuando tengo dudas de una palabra, la digito y me vengo a las imágenes. Entonces, no, sí. ajá, slurp meaning, le vamos a poner aquí significado. Y vamos a ver, ahí está, eh, pare, pasa con los espaguetis, pasa con el café, pasa con las bebidas, ¿verdad? O que pasa con las sopas, <laughs> slurp, right? And, slurp. yeah. For example, my dad, my dad is one of those uh, people that hate it. I remember when I was a child, believe me, I suffered a lot because he didn't like me. Well, we, we are three sisters. I have two other sisters. And while we were eating soup, he would say, no, you don't have to make noises, right? While, while you're eating soup. Well, hasta los nachos, pues los churritos. And, and he was like, kind of, you know, he hated that. But yes, eso sí es, me apunto, pero es porque mi, mi papá quizás dejó eso, ¿verdad? Y bien, bien, bien ahí en mi, en mi mente set up que sí, molesta un poquito, right? And I understand, slurp, right? Good job, guys. Eh, well, besides this, okay, this information, acuérdense que en el manual, chicos, hay más cosas, okay? En el manual hay más cosas y creo que la parte que más me gusta del manual es eh, el vocabulario que tiene, ¿verdad? Eh, las, y las grammar sections, porque ya vamos a ver lo demás, ¿verdad? Lamentablemente, pues, durante las presentaciones no se incluye todo porque en realidad es bastante, ¿verdad? Sin embargo, pues, yo trato de ir eh, agarrando los que siento que son... Eh, importantes, ¿verdad? Y mañana vamos a seguir hablando también de, de este tema. Eh, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta, chicos, hasta el momento. Questions? No? What does a quite, a quite, a quite mean? Acquaintance. An acquaintance yes. es, un, es un conocido. Por ejemplo, yo digo my friends, a la gente que yo conozco. ¿Verdad? Eh, pero si es alguien que es conocido, bueno, en español y en buen salvadoreño decimos un chero. No es mi amigo, pero es un chero, ¿verdad? Entonces, eso es un acquaintance. Un acquaintance es como, es más como camaradería, creo que le llaman, ¿verdad? Que, ah, sí, nos llamamos bien, pero no somos, pues, amigos o amigas, ¿verdad? Ya a un nivel más personal, más íntimo, ¿verdad? Sino que es más, más que todo superficial. Más que todo por, por trabajo, etc. Y es acquaintance. Acquaintance. You're welcome. Uh -huh. Es un conocido. Ok. Um, bueno, chicos, si no hay más preguntas, voy a pasar la asistencia para que ya vayamos finalizando. Vamos a venir. Dígame, Sandra, tenía pregunta, perdón. 
No, o sea, teacher, no. dije la mano así. Ah, va. ah va, se le cansó la mano digital, pues, ok. No problem. No problem. Vamos a pasar lista. Dice Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Yes, here. Thank you, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here, teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Antonio González Mila. Present, teacher. Thank you, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Present. Thank you, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Here. Thank you, Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present. Thank you, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jaime Thank you. Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, uh, Jenny Elizabeth Campos Martinez. Present, teacher. Thank Jenny you, Jose. Jenny Lisset. Ay, no, ya no. le cambié el nombre. Quizás Jenny Lisset Campos Martinez, sí. Uh, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present, teacher. Thank you, José Francisco Peña Peña. Hi, present. Thank you, José Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present, teacher. Thank you, José Jopito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present. Thank you so much. María Susena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Eh, Marta Ruz Enríquez Reyes. Present. Thank you. Eh, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present, teacher. Thank you. Neidy Ibis Méndez Albeño. Present, teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you, Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Presente. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present, teacher. Thank you, and Jensi Marlene León López. Y Zulma Beatriz Pérez Caldames. I'm here. Eso, thank you so much, guys. Ok, creo que ya este, pasé la, la, la asistencia, todos los mencioné, si no me equivoco. Así que nuevamente, thank you very much for being here today. And we're going to meet tomorrow. Any question, please write it down. And we're going to answer uh, and clarify your doubts here in class. So thank you very much for joining, guys. And have a wonderful evening. And see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. Tomorrow. Bye-bye.